We give the call to the member for Warringah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Treasurer, ATO data shows the combined income of five of the gas industry's biggest companies paid no income tax despite a combined income of $138 billion over the past seven years. At a time when Australian households and businesses are paying record prices for gas extracted from our resolves and sold back to us by these very companies, do you agree that your government's election promise of multinational tax reform should include a super profits tax? Give the call to the Treasurer. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Mr Speaker, and to the member for Warringah for her question. Uh, as she alluded to in her question, uh, the government's priority uh, is to make sure uh, that multinational corporations pay a fairer share of tax where they make their profits. Uh, and what I hope to do in the next day or two uh, is to release the discussion paper, uh, which is the consultation that we committed to when it comes to the implementation of the multinational tax policies that we took to the election. And they are our priority, uh, and they will be uh, hopefully implemented uh, as we uh, describe them in the election campaign. If that consultation process uh, brings to our attention some issues around the implementation of that promise, then obviously. Uh, then we will take that seriously. In addition to that, uh, there is, as the member is no doubt aware, uh, a big agenda around multinational taxes uh, from the OECD, which the Americans and others uh, have been leading as well. When I was uh, with the Governor of the Reserve Bank at the G20 meetings in Indonesia, uh, one of the topics of conversation with Secretary Janet Yellen and others uh, was about how the world can work together on the two pillars of the OECD agenda. Uh, again, to try and make sure uh, that we fix this problem in the global economy and certainly in our economy, uh, where it's too easy for multinational corporations to move their debt or move their profits around the world in a way uh, that sells countries short and makes it harder for us to fund the things that we really care about, uh, health care and education and all of those uh, federal government programs that we need to fund in the context of all of our other budget constraints. And so, uh, once again, a bit like the answer to the question from another colleague in the House, I think earlier this week, if not last week, uh, we don't intend to go down the path that you are asking us about, but we do intend to take meaningful action on multinational Order. tax. Has the Treasurer completed his answer? Oh. Resume your seat. I give the call to the member for Boothby. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Treasurer. What role will the Jobs and Skills Summit play in addressing the challenges facing our economy, and who will be involved? Give the call to the Treasurer. Thanks very much, Mr Speaker, and I congratulate once again the fantastic member for Boothby who joins this parliament for the first time. Now, before the parliament returns uh, for the next sittings of this place on the 1st and 2nd of September, uh, the Albanese Labor government will be hosting a Jobs and Skills Summit here in Canberra. And this is our opportunity to bring Australians together to address the big challenges that we confront in our economy, whether it be labour shortages or skills shortages or stagnant wages. It's our opportunity to work well, together well. to create more opportunities for more people in more parts of our, uh, more parts of our country. Now, this side of the House, we recognise that a better future relies on bringing people together. So bringing people together isn't just the aim and the guiding instinct of the Jobs and Skills Summit, it's also the aim and the guiding instinct of this government and of the Australian people that we serve. We want to ensure that there is a good, qualified worker for every business that needs one and a great, well-paid, secure job for every Australian that wants one. We want a bigger, more productive and better skilled workforce with strong and sustainable wages growth as a defining feature of our national economic success. And that's why the summit will bring together workers and their unions, employers and their peak organisations, community groups, experts and other levels of government uh, as well. And it's why this month there will be proper consultation uh, with whether it's by portfolio or in different communities around Australia as we conduct some genuine consultation in the lead up to the Jobs and Skills Summit. I'll be doing some of that in central Queensland next week. Because there is a hunger in this country for real talk about our economic challenges. There is an appetite to work together to address them. And there is a willingness in this country right now, at this moment, to see three things through the prism of our national 
economic interest. Now, Mr. Speaker, for the uh, it's time for those opposite to decide whether they want to be part of the solution here or whether they want to continue to be part of the problem. Now, their position on this job summit has been characteristically Order. confused. Some days, the Treasurer will resume his seat.